Okay, so I went down to Walney Lighthouse during the daytime to do an observation. And to cut a long story short, uh, let's open this one up. This was the results. So the distance this time, the distance, um, was 10.5 miles. So from the same spot essentially, but at a much higher altitude, I think it was closer to 60 feet, um, the bottom image is a is a pretty clear representation over 10.5 miles of, of what we saw. So basically we have the the lighthouse. Let me zoom in so that you can see this. So, so basically we have the lighthouse. We have a sand dune around about here, which can be seen. And then we have a little bit of sand um, on the shoreline. So the different colors tell you which is which. You know, obviously you've got the, the darker area, which is the the sand dune and then you've got the the sand on the shore basically um, so it's not an elevation it's more on the ground this stuff uh, that's an elevation because that's the sand dune um, and there's the lighthouse and behind the lighthouse obviously we have the house that's part of the lighthouse and you know you can't see it you're never able to see it from Blackpool because it's behind the the sand dune pretty obvious pretty pretty obvious right so that was from 60 feet and this was from three and a half feet <laughs> almost the same you've got the lighthouse you've got the sand bank and you've got the, the the sand the floor basically you know where the the water would fill up to the top of that so i think the tide height was about three and a half meters or something like that at the time so you know a pretty pretty good shore to shore observation of course the globies don't like this they don't like these these kind of tests but this is what I was doing this week. So let's cut a long story short about the daytime stuff. Now the nighttime stuff is far more interesting. <laughs> so uh, let's get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. Let me get up the, the nighttime observations. Right, so this week I had a message from Logan's Run. So Logan's Run has a P900 and he wanted to go and try and do the laser test uh, this weekend again. So the last time we attempted it uh, with the drone and with the laser and etc., cetera, um, it rained basically, and we were unable to perform the test. Um, so he went again on Friday and I went down to meet him. Now, for whatever reason, um, the P he couldn't see the, the laser from that distance, no matter which direction I shone it, straight up, straight out, it didn't make any difference. Um, but whilst I was there, I actually did some observations myself. <laughs> and this is where it gets interesting. This is where it gets really, really interesting. So we have uh, Logan's run from the other side. So he's obviously filming Blackpool. So I'm assuming that he's got um, some good, good pictures. I haven't actually seen them yet, but he told me that he could see all of Blackpool Tower right down to the base, etc. from from Walney and I have no reason to doubt that at all seeing as I've been to that location a couple of times and both times I went I was able to see shore to shore too so I'm hoping that he's got some some interesting uh, some interesting uh, photographs right let me show you where I was now I've put a little pin um, here what we have if we look over uh, this is in Blackpool so we have the Metropole Hotel which is here uh, then we have the cenotaph. This uh, this object here is the cenotaph. There's the Metropole Hotel. Here we have some steps. You know, you can see the the, the sea wall. You've got some steps going up there. You've got some steps going up there. Now, I was actually on this little ramp. It's more of a little ramp right down at the bottom. You see the different coloured sand actually. It's, pretty, it's quite a good uh, representation actually. The the, the, the coloured sand is pretty much where the water was, and I was right next to it here. We had a fisherman that was uh, fishing off the, the side of the seawall here, off this ramp. So he was he was fishing there. Anyway, so if we turn around, I'll show you some other things. We've got the pier. So here's the family pier. Uh, and I actually filmed this in some of the video, you know, some of the videos. So you'll see that. So so basically, this is my location. And wow, I've got some interesting stuff to share. Right, let's do some calculations first and foremost. Let's have a look how far it is to Walney Lighthouse. Okay, because, you know, I mean, this this lighthouse, it's only got a focal height of 69 feet, you know. Um, and this was at high tide. I actually went at high tide this time. 
So I'm at night time, trying to film Walney Lighthouse at high tide, which is down here. And the distance is 16.53 miles. Okay, so I'll save that there, 16.53. What I'll do now is I'll just get a little Metabunk. And we'll have a look at some curve calculators. Okay, let's bring this over here. Let's check everyone's doing all right, actually. I've not, uh, where are we? Let's transition that across so you can all see what's what. So go to Metabunk's Earth Curve Calculator. So here we go. So I do some different elevation heights. Basically, I'm gonna show you some video footage in a minute where I'm down at just three feet. Um, so the distance was 16.53 miles and the view height was three feet. So if we look at the geometric globe, no refraction at all. Uh, the geometric drop is 182 feet. Uh, the geometric hidden would be 138 feet. And if we use some refraction, the refracted hidden, this is with refraction, will be 116 feet or thereabouts. Bearing in mind, the focal height of this is only 69 feet. We've got 116 feet of missing with refraction here, right? So we shouldn't see it on a globe, right? It shouldn't be able to be seen. It's dead simple. It's behind the curve, right? Now, before anybody goes on about refraction, I actually took some screenshots before I left and when I returned. So let's have a look at this. So this was... Um, <clears throat> Folk down at the bottom here, it says uh, 14th of August, 2020, Friday. The time was 2037. And it was telling you the current current surf report and the current winds and the air and sea temperature. Now, the air temperature was 20 degrees C. The sea temperature was 17 degrees C. Okay, 20 and 17, pretty close. Let's have a look at the next image. This is when I returned. So when I returned at 22.57, uh, we have a air temperature of 19 degrees and a sea temperature of 17. So the sea stayed the same and the air temperature dropped by just one degrees in that two and a half hours that I was gone. All right, so the temperature stayed pretty consistent. And if we want to give you an idea of, of how little an effect that has, I'm going to show you a clip from uh, when Jesse Kozlowski appeared on Jose JG Gonzalez's channel. And we're going to listen to what he says when I obviously point out that one of the observations they did on one side of the lake, they had a temperature of 27 degrees and on the other side, it was 25. How would we be able to account for that with refraction? Listen to what these guys have got to say. The point also is that two degrees of centigrade is only a minuscule fraction on the on the kelvin scale and so you're not dealing with a lot of heat difference and we're not trying to split the atom with an observation over a water body because of that variation but it's not going to it, it has a range and it's going to be you know a, a range of a few meters you know not not inverting it all the way to flat i think that's all we need to hear so just a, a couple of centigrade uh, temperature difference is only going to change it a couple uh, or several meters not a lot it's not going to have a, a huge effect over this body of water now bearing in mind that this body of water that they're looking over is about 24 miles my distance to the lighthouse is 16.5 so just one degree of temperature shouldn't change things too much now i want you to bear that in mind for what I've got to show you coming up. Right, so let's get on with showing you the observation. Right, here we go. Well, we just saw the flash of it. Let me uh, there we go. 
and my elevation right now is just four feet because I'm down on my knees I'm holding it on my knee right now turn around show you there we go <laughs> I don't know if you can see that but that's where I was there's my knee just four feet above sea level happy days I don't know if I can go any lower Okay, elevation right now, three feet. Oh, we just saw some of that. I know I did. There we go. can't get any lower because the splash will go right in the camera we are right by the water's edge here I mean I'm down on my hands and knees and right next to this water I've just stood up and there's the Metropole Wow I think the globe's got some splaining to do Indeedy, indeedy, the globe does have some explaining to do. It has a lot of explaining to do, and a lot of my detractors have a lot of explaining to do. Because the story doesn't end there, right? The story does not end there. I'm going to show you a little graph. I'm going to show you a little graph. Actually, I'm going to pause this right now. Let's get off of here. I'm going to show you a little graph that I made. So, actually, I'll show you the, uh, the date first. So, Okay, so this was uh, Friday the 14th of August. Now, this is where it gets incredibly interesting, right? So, if we go to um, 7.38 p.m. So, at 7.38 p.m., the tide, the, the tide height is at 6.7 meters, right? At 7.38. And then, give or take, 20 minutes later, it's 6.7 meters. So, still the same height. If we go a little bit further on at 8.15, it's still 6.7 meters. And the next point on further from that, 8.34, still 6.7 meters. So at high tide, we've had at least an hour at this point where the tide was neither pushing in nor, nor coming back, right? So it was neither going out nor neither coming in, right? Uh, if we go to the next scale, 8.54, now this was the time that I was starting to take the photography. I got down there for this time, and this is the first time that I actually got the camera out, got down to four feet, and I saw this observation. Now at this time, the tide had just started to retreat. So it had gone from eight, uh, sorry, from 6.7 meters down to 6.6. .6. So it had dropped one-tenth of a meter, that's all it had dropped. In 20 minutes though, I mean, 10th of a meter in 20 minutes, 10 centimeters in, in 20 minutes. It's, it's not to be sniffed at, but it was moving out. So the tide was starting to move out, but not very fast. It was only dropping one tenth of a meter. If we look at the, the next scale, the next time at 9.14, the, the tide has dropped to 6.5 meters now. So again, in the next 20 minutes, it has just dropped 0.1 of a meter or 10 centimeters. Again, not a huge amount, but it has still moved and it's moving out ever so slowly. Things start to ramp up though. After 9.14, when we go to 9.34, 6.4, sorry, so it's, it's again, it's just, uh, it's just it's, at 9.34, again, it's just dropped one tenth of a meter. The next one's interesting, 9.34, so one after this, 9.54, it's gone to 6.2. So now it's instead of a tenth of a meter, it's now two tenths of a meter. So instead of 10 centimeters, it's 20 centimeters that has dropped out. So the speed of the tide retreating is starting to pick up and the, the height is lowering dramatically. So it's gone from a steady 0.1 to now 0.2. And if we go from 9.54 to the next time, which is 10.14, it drops to 5.9. And that's another increase, so it's gone from 0.2 to now 0.3. So 
So it was going at just 10 centimeters, then 20, now 30. So the speed of the tide dropping is increasing quite rapidly. Now this is gonna become quite important. Let me show you this on the graph, um, just to give you an idea. So when I turned up, um, I turned up right here in the center one, at just after 2054. So when I was filming and I saw it four feet, um, this was the, uh, the tide had just dropped a tenth of, uh, of, a, of a meter. And then I continued filming throughout this entire time, all, the, all this down here, down to the bottom, I continued filming too. Now, during these times, I was able to see shore to shore, no problem. See the lighthouse, see, the, see everything that I needed to see. The problem started to happen between this time, between 2154 and 2214, when we had the big drop off. So it dropped by a third of a meter, it basically in just 20 minutes. Now I was filming at that time and I was absolutely shocked by what I was able to uncover. And I'm gonna play you the video, hopefully. Um, it should be around here, let's see. I knew it. I absolutely fucking knew it. Would you, Adam and Eve? It right. So I'm gonna hold my camera right here. I knew this was gonna happen. Absolutely stonking perfect. Proof perfect, I'm telling you. You cannot see the lighthouse flashing. Now, I'm essentially in the same spot, but quite a bit higher. And the reason that we can no longer see the lighthouse anymore is that the tide has started to go out and the fluid dynamics of the water has pushed that water higher to block the route. So we can't see it. We don't have a direct line of sight anymore because the water is now moving. It's now pushing out. I absolutely knew it. I suspected this was the case. And here we have it. Here we have it. The proof. No lighthouse flashing. And I'll show you where I am. So, um, uh, how many, so, well, there's the bag. There's my bag, if you can see it. There's the steps. That was showing you before. And there's where I was filming, way down there. So I'm gonna count the steps. And then it's down a ramp. And I'm gonna say, I'm probably at around about 17 or 18 feet right now above water as a good guess so how many steps was I on so one two three four five six seven and then all the way down the ramp all the way down the ramp which is about another seven foot seven steps drop and then one two back down to where I was <laughs> now back down to where I was Now let's see if I can see anything over there. You know what, I don't think I can see anything. I can't see. I can't see, I, I can't see anything. I can't even see the, light, uh, the lights of the buildings, the barrow. from where I was just a few minutes ago. About 20 minutes ago when I was doing the filming down here. Same location, the tide's dropped. Well, the water's dropped about, huh, probably a foot and a half to two feet. So from absolute high tide, this is, this is what I suspected. So from absolute high tide, when there was no motion on the water, we was able to, it was pushing, no push, no pull on the side. We had flat water with no energy in it. 
and as soon as the tide's turned now what we have now is a complete blackout can't see nothing can't see anything and try and zoom in and and do a pan across I'm not sure what that is that's way out of where the buildings are though probably some kind of buoy or something but wow <laughs> oh, I am so chuffed I just proof of concept right let's keep this video going so yeah this is where I was filming from before if you remember down there and I showed you around here and I'm gonna go all the way back up again I'm gonna stop when I can see the lighthouse Now this width should be able to capture that lighthouse flashing, but it doesn't. Wow, how high do I have to go? <laughs> Let's go up another few steps. I mean, right now I'm even higher than I was just a, <laughs> three, four minutes ago. I'm actually on higher steps than before. <laughs> How many steps am I up now? Right, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen steps. Before I was at seven and I was able to see it. Wow, so how high do I have to go now? Let's go right up here. Fantastic, fantastic proof this. This is unbelievable. I am chuffed a bit. I long suspected this. Vindication. There we go. Now we see the lighthouse. But I had to go. <laughs> I had to go some, probably up to close to 30 feet or more above the water right now. As you can see, I'm actually just at the bottom of these steps here, top of the wall. It's in night vision, so I don't know how clear this is all going to be. But. Uh, I think that evidence speaks for itself. <laughs> I wonder what time it is now. Oh, let's see if I can get it on my phone. Can anyone see that? 2204 Friday the 14th of August so essentially that was my my video it was about a seven or seven and a half minute video so obviously when I started filming um, started filming roughly what five to ten something like that and if we look at our if we look at our graph look at the graph that I had up uh, just a minute ago so just uh, 2154 so at 2154 the tide had just dropped by uh, 0.2 of a, a meter and between the hours of 21.54 and 22.14 it had dropped by 
uh, 0.3 of a meter. So when I'm filming in uh, in these conditions when it's either flat or very little change, so minus 0 0.1 of a, of a meter over 20 minutes, a slow withdrawal of the ocean. As soon as that ocean started picking up in speed and dropping quicker and receding faster, then we encountered blockage. Would you, Adam and Eve? That's when we encountered the blockage. And I had to go up to 30 feet uh, during this time. I had to go at 22 or 4, I had to go up to 30 feet elevation to see the lighthouse. When, when I went back to just an hour before, when the tide had only just started to turn, we was able to see shore to shore and see that lighthouse flashing that should have been 50 feet behind the curve. Right, I think that's vindication at least. There was hardly any change in the in the air temperature versus the sea temperature, so that couldn't have been a contributing factor. There was no swell on the day, right? There was no swell. There was no wind either. So there was no wind, no 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 swell, no temperature change. The only thing that changed and created blockage was the the speed that the tide went out in these times between these times. Now I have the entire I have the entire uh, data set here for anybody that wants to have these they can have them not a problem. I have uh, video upon video uh, that shows the observation from just three feet above the water and then I have obviously the the set of videos that you just seen uh, that shows you the obstruction encountered once the tide started to recede. So I believe as I've been trying to say that the tide on its way out or on its way in has a big effect on what we can see of water. It can create blockage, right? Because you have all that water piling out, it has nowhere to go, it has to push over the, the other water in front of it and it creates what I would call a localized bulging. And I've said that many times and I've been ripped to shreds about it before by people saying localized bulging, what, the water curves? No, it's fluid dynamics and it's just what happens. Now, this was just the observation. You can decide yourself what was the real thing or not the real thing. You know, I mean, when I was down at three feet and seeing shore to shore, I was also able to see shore to shore at eight, 10 and 12 feet on the same time. But when the tide really started to change, that's when it started to block everything out. Right, so there's the data set, guys. And I feel that some more, inf more research in this is definitely going to be um, uh, something to look forward to in the future because I think it's a proof of concept, I really do.